Good evening. I'm Cizwe Mpofu Walsh and welcome to Unfiltered. Firstly, let me say thank you so much for the enthusiastic response as I join as the new host for this show. I'm really excited to bring you a hard-hitting current affairs show where we leave no stone unturned and we leave no question unanswered. Now, our political landscape has been fascinating of late. And of course, one of the most curious and interesting features is the extent to which parties with less than 1% of the vote sometimes are able to wield power over an entire council, an entire parliament. Hey, who, who knows, in 2024, maybe even an entire election. So small parties have massive outsized influence. Take COPE, for example, the focus of tonight. They came within a hair's breadth of controlling the mayorship of Tuane and the speakership of Johannesburg and exerting massive influence already in Ekuruleni. Cope from just three seats was nearly able to wield Gaudeng. What does that say about democracy? Is that fair? Some say should small, disoriented, divided parties like Cope even be allowed to wield such massive influence over millions of lives from a base of thousands of votes. And, there's, and then there's the internal squabbles within the party. Tonight, we delve into these questions with someone who, to my mind, is one of the most fascinating politicians in South Africa today. Why do I say this? Well, he's the deputy president of COPE, but some call him the shadow president or the de facto president. Willy Madisha, rising from Kosatu, has made a massive impression on South African politics through his control of COPE as a party now. And we inquire into his ability as a deputy president of COPE to steer the murky ship of coalitions as well as internal infighting. We'll also be joined by other guests as we inquire into COPE's outsized influence on our politics and analysts. Particularly, we'll be speaking to Anele Mda, a former youth leader of COPE, and Nkosikulule Nyembezi, who is a policy analyst at Elections Monitoring Africa Network. Thank you for joining us on this first show. Let's get into it. Mr. Matisha, thank you so much for being our first guest. It's a great honor to have you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. My only hope is that you don't uh, accuse me of Hong Hong, but, but that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, English. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thanks so much for joining us. Yes. I guess my first question is, do you recognize Musiwa Lekota as the president of COPE? Yes, uh, Musiwa Lekota is the president of COPE. When we formed COPE uh, 14 years ago, uh, we came together, we were quite few, of course, uh, he was the leader from the first day, and um, we uh, moved uh, from what is called the revolutionary movement of then. Um, I was the president of uh, COSATU, I was in the leadership of the Communist Party, he was the national chairperson of the ANC, uh, and, and others as well were in the leadership of the ANC, etc., etc. So and you, you uh, we came together him, but, and moved but, uh, forward as the leadership. Absolutely. Group. But, but of course, the reason I ask is because there's been all this uncertainty last year in August. Mm. There was a suspension. There was a counter suspension. And it's not clear right now exactly who's holding power in the party. So you say that uh, Musiwa Lukota is indeed the president and you recognize his legitimacy. Mm. Yes, the intra-organizational problems. But uh, Mr. Lokota is the president of uh, uh, the party. I am the deputy president of the party. And uh, the structures are there. But let me emphasize, yes, the intra-organizational uh, problems, which I must say, we're busy dealing with them. And uh, inside the coming three months, we shall have dealt with all of them. And the party will be uh, on track once again. Well, it's very interesting that you take us back to the history of where COPE came from and yes. the history that you share together with Musiwa Legoda. Mm -hmm. I want to give our viewers a certain historical context of yes. where the party comes from and where it's going. 
and we'll come back and continue this conversation okay. after that. You're welcome. Okay. I would like to take this opportunity to inform the nation that today I handed a letter to the Speaker of the National Assembly, the Honorable Bale Gambete, to tender my resignation from the high position of President of the Republic of South Africa. A resignation that would finally split the African National Congress and birth a new party called the Congress of the People. Hope, a new agenda for change and hope. With many false starts since its 2008 launch, COPE's Achilles Hill has always been its perception as a party of disgruntled ANC members. According to them, they couldn't be led by the undesirable Jacob Zuma after Tabombeki's defeat at the party's 52nd elective congress in Bulugwane. When there is a systematic attack on the values that define us as a nation, we, the Congress of the People, will hold hands with all South Africans to defend the values that define us as a nation. I have so much hope for the future of the children of South Africa. Not. Fifteen years later, you COPE is a party on please. its knees, with many of its founding members no longer wanting to associate with it, and South Africans wondering, what was it all for? The once shared brotherhood is a thing of the past. It started with the leadership struggles between party leader Muswali Goda and co-founder Mbazi Mashilowa, which saw the latter leave the party in 2010. Some of the prominent leaders who abandoned the ship include Smats Ngonyama, Reverend Mvume Tandala, and the now deceased Mluleki George. And the matter was about to go to the court. Ironically, of a party that fled corruption and unethical leadership from the ANC, COP has slipped from one crisis to another with ongoing leadership tussles, contests over illegitimate structures, non-consultative and factional leadership. And if you are cold, why is you blocking members of the members outside? outside? Why? why? But the most embarrassing of all misfortunes was the recent exposure of the Atswane mayoral candidate, Dr. Moruna Maguarela, as a fraud who lied and faked his way into the mayoral office. Dr. Maguarela, how are you feeling this morning? I'm blessed. It further exposed COP as a party with weak political and administrative structures, highly fictionalized leadership involved in mass langing with endless suspension of one leader after another. Party head Muswali Gota remains suspended allegedly for failing to execute his duties. Former trade unionist Willie Madisha is COP's deputy president and one of the party's two members in parliament. Is it time the party considers closing shop? No, no, Makongoma, for unfiltered SABC News. Welcome back, uh, and we welcome Ms. Mda to our program. Thank you very much for being with us. So, Mr. Madisha, you come from far with COPE, yes. and in some ways, there's a bit of disappointment about the way that the party has devolved into division and infighting. Mm -hmm. Yet at the same time, you hold this massive amount of power, especially in metros in, in Gauteng. Do you think it's fair that, that a party that has just three seats in Gauteng has had such an impact on Johannesburg, where you have, hold the speakership, on Swane, mm -hmm. where you were the mayor, albeit um, for a short period? Well, what we are doing, I must say, we're working with the other political parties uh, throughout the country, wherever we have uh, a seat. Uh, why? Because that which we are looking at are the problems which uh, people are faced with, you know, the problems of hunger, non-delivery, uh, the problems of uh, thievery by those who are in power, corruption, etc. And uh, we have said for as long as those things are there, COPE will not allow that. And indeed, that's why COPE was formed. And we are continuing with uh, uh, all those things that uh, uh, actually made us to uh, get formed. And, and I, uh, I, hear, I hear you on that, but I think one of my questions is, mm -hmm. look, like I say, I think you're one of the most powerful politicians, certainly in Gauteng metros right now. People may not realize or appreciate that. But 
this is a party where uh, Tom Mofokeng recently said that there are rogue members, that there are criminal elements trying to hijack the party. Um, your spokesperson, Mr. Bloom, then countered and said, no, in fact, Mofo Geng and, and his faction are the criminals. And so, uh, again, I ask, is it fair to subject the people of Tswane, of Johannesburg, to a party which is so riven with division on the one hand, but exerts such power on the mm. other? Um, COPE is united. Well, be it, I must say, divided here and there. United and when, then, when leaders are, are saying that you have... No, rogue, I'm, expl I'm going to explain that. But, I mean, rogue members... I understand criminals, what you're saying. That's, mm. that's yeah. quite a serious, okay. a serious yes. indictment. Now, and, that is a one problem. It is there in Ekuruleni. You have referred to the name of one person. Mr. Mofokeng, who is your Gauteng yeah. chairperson, a very important player. He was. He was the chairperson. But... Uh, his term of office came to an end in 2018. Well, but then, this is the but interesting then, thing, Mr. Madisha, because but then within if the you party, kindly could uh, wait so no, that I finish. Absolutely, I will. But I think the point I'm getting at is how can you say COPE is united mm. on the one hand mm. when the, the youth movement leader, the Gauteng chair, whether he, it's actually not clear whether he's there or not, uh, you know, is, is calling for the president to resign one minute there's one person suspended, another minute there's another. It's not credible to say that the party is united in, in this situation, is it? Which takes me to the first point that I raised. I said there are intra-organizational problems, but then the organization is coming together. I gave you, uh, just to repeat, I said in three months' time, everything shall have been dealt with. We shall have gone to the uh, National Congress. And I'm coming back to the question that you have raised about... Uh, Tom Mufugeng, yeah, sure. uh, whom you purport, or who is purported to be the uh, provincial uh, chairperson of Gauteng, he is not. His term of office came to an end in 2018. Well, he had a big but, press conference yes. three months ago after Mr. Maguarela, who will get to, yes. had to leave in, in ignominy. So he certainly was speaking on behalf of a big part of the party. He purported to be representing COPE. And I want to say to you, he's not the leader of COPE. What he has actually done has been to usurp power. We had a, um, a counselor in Ekuruleni, but then this man, Thomas Mufugeng, who is not even on the list of uh, the people that we said should be uh, on the list of uh, counselors for Ekuruleni, he's not there. He was a counselor here in Johannesburg, but then he drove out of uh, that counselor's uh, position, the counselor from Johannesburg, and uh, he went back now. He is in uh, Eguruleni. It's a great deal of problem, but, and but that is what we are dealing with. How now, if you the, talk about criminality... How is it that, that the national leadership was, was oblivious to, to him moving from these different places and suddenly only finds out later when he holds a press conference purporting to be chairperson, uh, how is it that the national leadership is not alive to these mm. questions? We are alive uh, to that particular problem. Um, what we have done in Gauteng, like it is the case in all the other provinces, we have the interim leadership course that we have established. In Gauteng as well, we have a leadership uh, structure that we have established, but then he has gone, you know, it's a coup d'etat, sort of. He has jumped other people and he has done this kind of thing uh, that he has done, which is extremely wrong. He purports to be a priest, for example, but that which he is doing is extremely wrong and we cannot accept that. Ms. Mda, you were part of COPE in the early days. And I suppose my question would be, how do you react to what Mr. Madisha says in terms of the party still being united, but then clearly there, there being these divisions. What, what's your response to um, the condition of COPE at the moment? Um, thank you, Sizwe. Um, I think, first of all, one of the things that we must never, um, um, you know, um, play um, light to is the fact that political parties have got the power and authority that they get given by the voters and the electorate. When this 
power that they get given is um, uh, sent to them. It is sent with a, a load of responsibilities that um, that political power entity is entrusted by those people that it will be able to advance a particular cause that we were not seeing anyone who um, looked like they were possible ready to, uh, to advance this particular cause until this entity came into existence. So the, 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 the state of COPE as it is um, right now, it's, it's a, a serious indictment that it's a pity that its leadership, it doesn't look like they do recognize the importance of of what it means for them to have dwindled to this oblivion that they find themselves into. And also, it, 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 it's a failure, it's a critical failure for them to reflect on the kind of leaders that they are and what they have done with the, um, with, with, with the public vote um, that was conveyed to them as a symbol of trust, that there's a particular cause that the community of South Africa at that point in time was trusting them that they would be able to go into these um, um, uh, places of strategic power and, and unleash a particular well-structured program of action that will seek to reverse or make better certain conditions and situations that people find themselves into. And I think looking at where it is now, first of all, let's, let's, let's agree. And I think um, one of the things that all leaders of COP need to do really is, is, is show um, some level of grace with which the disappointment that they've brought to people that continuously hold trust over them. Can I, can I ask you on that though? Wasn't it people like you who we had great hope in who, who could have stuck around, maybe made sure that some of the factional fighting you know, didn't go in the direction that it did? To what extent do we hold the current leadership accountable? And to what extent do we hold people who left COPE and, and ran away in some ways from COPE accountable for this malaise? The good thing about understanding leadership, Siswe, is knowing that at every step of the way, whatever actions you take as a human being, as a person yourself, you are either holding yourself accountable first before you can hold any other entity accountable. And I think in my space, in my case as Anneli, I would tell you one thing that um, I will never regret um, the move that we made when we established the COPE because it was a, a move at the time that was necessitated by circumstances and conditions of the time. And the good thing about it is that went um, throughout the time from when we started raising some of the issues as far as as far back as the 2005 NGC in Midrand, <clears throat> when we raised some of the issues that were to later um, um, unfold exactly the way we did. I, I mean, exactly the way we, we were spoken about in, in as far as how the, 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 the dwindling of the party is going to happen. But I do not think at this point in time, I can um, be held responsible for the circus that you find in the organization at this point in time, because I believe that people who knew what they were in COP for, and when they felt that whatever contribution we came here to make is no longer going to happen. The best and the, and the most credible thing that one could have done is to take that coat and their jacket and step out and leave the people who believe that the only thing that is best that can be done with COPE is, do, is, 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 is fighting for positions rather than fighting to ensure that the organization leaves and does what it, it was established to do. Mr. Matisha, how do you how do you respond to that, and, and what's what's your take on those who left Cope and those who tried to stay and, and keep the ship afloat? I'm very happy she was the leader of a uh, youth movement, and I hope she does uh, come back one day. But all that I want to say to you is that which all those uh, uh, points that made us to come together to form Cope are permeating our country at the moment, and that is why Cope is more relevant today. Yes, there are problems, but it's a few individuals who, as she says, and agrees, I agree with her, who have come into COPE to get as much as uh, possible as they could. And then we're busy dealing with that. Hence, I've given you this particular period of, uh, you know, three months to say we're going on with the launching of uh, uh, provinces, our national congress that will be there in uh, uh, July, and we shall be able Actually, they started, we have begun to deal with all the problems uh, that have been there right. that you are quoting, for example. No, absolutely. And we're going to continue the debate when we come mm. back from the break. We've looked at some of the internal infighting within COPE. We're then also going to look at some of their influence on municipalities before bringing in our analysts to look at deeper questions of elections and electoral reform. Stay tuned. We'll be back after the break.
Welcome back. My name is Sizwe Mpofu Walsh and I'm your host on Unfiltered. This is SABC News, Channel 404. I want to turn your attention to a graphic which shows the electoral fortunes of COPE in terms of its performance in 2009, in 2014, and in 2019. And this is in the national elections. And we also have their local government uh, performance within elections. And COPE has really gone from the heights of many seats in parliament, even in local government at, at some point, to just between 13 and 15. Of course, it's always difficult because people may be resigning at, at different times. But you can see where we sit, we're talking about somewhere in the region of 15 seats from 235 seats. And the reason I think this is interesting, uh, Mr. Madisha, is that I would argue that in some ways you wield more power now from 15 than you did in some ways from 235. And so a lot of people do criticize you for the internal infighting, but there's some kind of wisdom. I don't know who it is, if it's you or if it's Mr. Bloom, but there's someone, I suspect it's you because of your Kosatu days, but there's someone who is wielding this power, three seats in Gauteng that COPE has, and turning that into being able to control councils and control uh, mayorships. It's not power are you Are you the de facto president of COPE? Are you the, are you the, the, the power behind the power? Um, you talk about de facto, not this de jure. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Mr. Lekota is the president of COPE. And Moigu Terra, okay. So, so <laughs> he is the president of COPE. And uh, in line with the uh, constitution of COPE, he remains there until the next Congress. So I want to say that. But secondly, uh, I believe in uh, you know, the leadership. We must be united. That's why you talk about Mr. Bloom and others. Uh, we are there to make sure that we bring COPE together were able to move forward. Yes, we have uh, referred us to the uh, numbers that we got when we went to the elections, the first elections after we were formed. It's actually, uh, we had 37 uh, seats, 30, the National Assembly plus seven in the NCOP, but then it has gone down, of course, uh, because of this intra-organizational problems that I've spoken about. You have quoted one in Ekuruleni, which you are dealing with. And, and we're going we're gonna to come to that. We certainly yes. are. But I, I just and also then, just want to ask um, Ms. Mda, you said, mm. I'll say, mm. why, why do you say that when, when I ask Mr. Madisha if he's the de facto president? Why are you, why are you afraid of, of Mr. Lekota? You know, um, one of the issues that um, Willie and, 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 and his uh, people in COPE will never um, be honest about is the fact that they have created the entity COPE into um, a, 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 an extension of the persona legota. They did that when it was um, uh, convenient for them at the time because the problematic people who were not going to be um, conveyor belts to things that are foreign in the organization were there and they were not willing to allow, um, you know, this unilateralism, that um, approach of, of leadership that um, um, uh, Ligota was bringing. At that time, because it was convenient to people like Madisha and Dennis Bloom and Shego and all of them, there was nothing, there was everything wrong with the people that were, were condemning the way in which leadership style was being uh, projected from the presidency. And later on, what you saw them doing when they convened a press conference where him and, and, and Dennis Bloom were now attacking Likota, telling the public that they've suspended Likota, it was because the things that earlier on, it was convenient for them to attack other people who were speaking about the problems that were creeping in the organization at that time. It was not things that they were willing and keen and ready to deal with. When they realized that nothing is changing in as far as focusing the organization into building one solid program of action that politically COPE can say we have achieved this as a political organization and we have rallied South Africans in this particular way, in this particular term that we've been given power by South Africans. But they 
they have not done any of those because all as you as he continuously speak to you responding to your question he, he speaks on intra organization what kind of organization the only thing that is seized with it's intra organizational problems where are the programs of action absolutely and uh, mr madisha i'll give you a chance mm. to respond don't worry we have we have a long time this evening uh, but i do want to bring in our, our analyst mr okay. nyembezi because you bring an interesting <coughs> perspective mr nyembezi from the broader perspective of what this means for our wider electoral politics where parties like cope are able to wield outsized influence and outsized power what's your response to the discussion so far and can you zoom out for us a little bit just to think about how this actually affects our broader electoral system oh thank you very much and uh, greetings to the viewers and uh, your guests you see i think um, it's a good thing that we have political parties that are in chamber whether it's councils or in any form of legislature who occupy executive positions uh, because for example we know that positions like uh, the chairperson of scopa even the speaker deputy speaker are supposed to be held by smaller parties or independent candidates uh, so that they can be able to hold the executive accountable the executive which mostly comes from the majority party or the majority of coalition parties so it was a good thing for the speaker for other positions to be held by other parties including um, being held by cope uh, but now a parties like cope were supposed to get into that space as representatives of the people because we know once parties are elected into legislative bodies they become representatives of the people not to come in um, as pawns or to come in uh, as being given patronage by bigger parties uh, because in so doing they are unable to fulfill uh, the role so it is the lack of that principle that south africa is crying for the lack of that demonstrable role where it is said independent parties small parties and independent candidates are supposed to show themselves as as representatives of the people and some people have argued that this calls for new laws that there should be thresholds in terms of the number of votes you get and whether you can actually exert executive power what are your views on that do you err on the side that we should allow as much representation as possible or do you think that for the stability of government we should introduce thresholds for which parties can hold power no thresholds at all section 19 of the constitution is clear every south african has a right to stand for public office and if elected to vote i'm sorry if elected to occupy office in the same way as every south african has a right to vote uh, in in the election so it is the electorate that must choose and i think the ordering and reordering that has been happening reflects the will of the people i mean we've spoken about the number of seats which cope occupied initially and the number of seats that it occupies now so there must be no threshold what is needed is for political parties to have principled positions that say we campaign for votes based on our manifestos now that we have been elected and we are public representatives we are not longer supposed to represent narrow party interests let us merge and find commonalities in our election manifestos and then based on that we develop a program that we're going to spend the money that is the tax that is collected and 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 better the lives of the people so it is the lack of principle in political parties that is a trouble but it cannot be corrected uh, by legislating for it we just need the electorate to be assertive and for example when we go for election campaigns to ask those political parties how are you going to conduct yourselves in the election in the coalition governments are you going to take matters of another municipality and impose them in this municipality just because you you have a central deploying a committee and that should not be allowed and mr matisha you you have an opportunity to respond to to various points but also yeah. just just to to put it to you as well that mm. on the one hand people think that there's a danger yeah. with parties like yours actually being able to even become the mayor but on the other hand people say it's actually a good thing in fact mm. it's good to have diverse representation from different political parties the danger i suppose is that small parties can be used as mr nyembezi says as pawns for bigger parties and so i think one of the questions about cope because you have moved from da coalitions certainly in gauteng to anc eff coalitions is 
are you being used by those bigger parties? Put up, but really the mm. power is behind in, in the form of your, your power in COPE, but also in, in the form of other party leaders who are pulling the strings and propping up these small parties into positions of outsized authority. I must say that I agree with him. Um, he, he is correct. Um, as parties, we sit, we negotiate, uh, albeit we may be small, but then you check, you know, the common interests uh, and those common interests in our case, now the people of South Africa, they've got to be taken forward. Now, you are quoting uh, what is happening in Gauteng. We have come together, together with the other uh, political parties, um, DA and others, we have said that uh, we signed this particular agreement so that uh, we can, for example, in Johannesburg, put our councillor there. They agreed as the chairperson of uh, all the uh, a, a council uh, that thing, uh, committees. We agreed that in uh, uh, Ekuruleni, our councillor will become MMC. We agreed that in uh, Etwani, our councillor will be the, uh, the speaker. But then those individuals assisted by, for example, the person that you quoted before, went out of the way and uh, did whatever they did. And uh, I will, I can tell you, for example, that from tomorrow, we shall tell the country that this is what these people are doing uh, in the country, hmm. in the organization, things which are horrendous, really. When you say tomorrow, is there going to be a statement? Is, is we shall make statements, we'll do all these kind of things. We'll show you, we'll show the nation uh, that COPE is a proper organization. Well, thank you for helping us to break. And we'll be able to move forward. Thank you for helping us to break some news here and unfiltered. But, but also, uh, Mr. Madisha, what, what I do want to ask in terms of that is you've taken us through the mechanics of how you've negotiated. And I might say negotiated very well, uh, given what you've been able to achieve in Gauteng. But have you moved? Have you switched allegiances to the ANC? And some argue that it's your influence on COPE now that you are spoken of as the de facto president, that you have moved the alliances from the DA towards the ANC and that in 2024, who knows, you could hold the one seat that determines who governs this country and you will be on the ANC side rather than the DA side. Is that a fair assessment? Well, politics is the art of the possible, I must say. Uh, COPE will sit and uh, go into discussions and uh, take resolutions and say this is the direction uh, to which we are going. But at the moment, like I'm saying, what happened in uh, the metros around Johannesburg is not what COPE came up with, but then those individual uh, councillors uh, went into uh, negotiations, did whatever they did, and moved basically out of that which the organization had come up with. And uh, that must be condemned. We're very angry with what they have done. Starting here, uh, this uh, so-called uh, a uh, person uh, uh, here uh, who's uh, leading, chairing uh, the metro here in Johannesburg. That uh, person who became the mayor in Swani. And uh, this Thomas Mufuke, who is now, who has now uh, uh, gone on, is a coup d'etat in uh, a Guru Lane. Well, absolutely unhappy with that. But then COPE is going to deal with all these kind of problems. And we shall announce from tomorrow. All right. Absolutely. We'll continue this conversation. We'll continue uh, getting insight from our expert analyst as well as Ms. Mda, come back with some responses to what's been said by Mr. Uh, Mr. Madisha. We'll take a short break and then continue our conversation on COPE, a party with three seats in Gauteng, wielding unimaginable power for millions of its residents. Welcome back. I'm Sizwe Mpofu Walsh, the new host of Unfiltered, and we're having a fascinating conversation about how small parties are wielding outsized power in municipalities across the country. We've been speaking to COPE Deputy President Willy Madisha, as well as former COPE leader Anele Nda. We're also joined by policy analyst uh, Kulule Nyembezi from the Elections Monitoring Africa Network. Now, 
Ms. Mda, can you respond to some of the things that Mr. Madisha has said about, you know, in three months' time, things are going to be fine in terms of, you know, tomorrow an announcement will be made and unity will flow from the heavens. What are your views on that before we take a zoom out again with Mr. Nyembezi? Actually, I wanted, um, I wanted to start on the, on the question you asked earlier on that, um, that was establishing whether smaller parties in this state of governance, especially as it is happening in local government, mm. whether the, the, the smaller parties wielding more power, are they able to use that power strategically mm. for their own benefit? When I'm talking benefit, I'm talking about a point where they are able to um, um, move with a certain policy direction that they would have long wanted an opportunity to open itself so that they can be able to advance that particular progressive cause that they would be having. And what, I think what do you my, think about that? My, my answer, honestly, is that at this, at this point in time, I wouldn't say, except for how IFP is doing in KwaZulu Natal, I don't think smaller parties outside of KwaZulu Natal that have been um, that have landed in, in strategic positions of authority have managed to use them in a very strategic way that is able to give them the mileage that they have thought they've lost by not um, you know, amassing sufficient numbers in terms of votes. But now that they see themselves being in a position where they can, for instance, as you were saying earlier on, they can find themselves being the ones who are the kingmakers in a broader metro or in a, in a, in a municipality. I do not think they have managed to, up to this point, um, leveraged on that. I mean, Talk of, of, of the city of Tswane. That, that's a mm. mega, mega, mega city. You cannot have um, a cope squandering such a strategic position that they held, even the one of being a speaker. I mean, if, it, if, if, if honestly, um, um, it was for um, a, a, a progressive thinking for me, I don't think Cope was, was even supposed to have put its hand up for, 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 for the position of the executive mayor. I think they ought to have retained themselves in the, in the position of the speaker and allow other political parties to find amongst themselves a, a, a fit and a suitable candidate that will come and fill in the, 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 the vacancy of the, of the position of the mayor. The reason I'm saying they should have done that is because they have now gone to even reduce the amount of public credit that was left on them simply because they saw these big opportunities and positions that are opened and they wanted all of them to themselves and look what is happening now with the party I mean you are correct from a party that um, managed to get 38 seats when it, it when it came into 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 existence in 2009 to a party which now stands on two members in the National Assembly and not just them being two members in the National Assembly season there are two members who plays no significant role, none whatsoever in the national discourse. They are not advancing any strategic program of action. Even in parliament, you don't hear cope making, um, um, you know, stances on, on, on any of the critical issues that are taking place. I mean, right now, we, I mean, come to think of it, how many scandals have we had coming from parliament, right? Less than a month ago, we had the Tottenham. What, do you know what was the stance of cope there? You don't know because they never said anything. You had the, 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 the issue of um, now the ministers, some of the ministers accused of uh, fraudulent qualifications. Have you had COP saying anything? No, they are not anywhere. So I'm saying they, they, might, be, they might be small in as far as them numerically not having sufficient numbers, but they need to understand the power that they still hold even sure. now that they can still use to their advantage. Absolutely. Mr. Nyembezi, how do you respond to that? Are small parties actually appreciating the power that they wield at the moment? It seems no sooner have they actually assumed office than the opportunity is squandered and then voters start thinking, well, what's the point? What are your views on, on the extent to which small parties are seizing this unique opportunity of our electoral system? I want to start by affirming COPE and say, look, they have also, there have been significant contributions that the party has made, particularly in the National Assembly. Take the, uh, the legislation on opening space for independent candidates. Uh, I mean, COPE proposed that uh, private members' bills and they have consistently uh, pushed positions that have uh, been consistent with the submissions of a, a civil society to say that we do not need uh, these stumbling blocks uh, for opening way for independent candidates and enormous number of uh, signatures before you can contest the calling off period 
Uh, I mean, if you look where that legislation started from and the role of COPE in ensuring that it is where it is now, where the, the president is supposed to sign it, at least uh, COPE under the leadership of Lakota, uh, there's something to commend there. Um, uh, your guest, uh, Anele, speaks about the credibility that the parties are losing. I think we now need to move away from this palace politics because the voters didn't vote to see so and so occupying this position and getting this gratification. That is, was not the basis of what was in the manifestos. COPE lost a lot of credibility. The time they presented a manifesto that is not in sync with the aspirations of the majority of the people. Because we see from the Stats SA, the surveys, they tell us about unemployment. They tell us the, the misery of young people uh, who are supposed to be working, but they are not working, crime. We know about the general household survey that tells us about the number of households who go to bed without food, uh, teenage pregnancy, you name it. Uh, so when we had fees must fall as a major issue in South African politics, politi I mean, political parties such as COPE were not there to be found. We had a recount of what happened in 1976 where the young people who were supposed to be looked after by adults were there on their own fighting for uh, free education. So there was a, a misconnect between election manifestos presented by COPE in successive e uh, election campaigns and what you see on the ground as being the priorities uh, of the people. I understand also the disconnect because um, Comrade Madisha and others, they come from COSATU. And of course, you know, COSATU uh, with the unemployment uh, is now made up of uh, uh, members and unions who are civil servants. Uh, the economy has shifted into uh, informality. The people, the working class now are not unionized. And so it's difficult to, to speak to those. And when you hear a manifesto of COPE speaking as though people still have the bosses and they, they collect UIF and other things, when they struggle from hand to mouth, you then see that you can't expect a comeback uh, by way of an electoral support. Let's put so that, I let's think put that it's, it's one way Mr. Nyambezi. No, no, th th thank you. And let's, let's put that because I think it's an important proposition to put to cope. Something that Ms. Mdai has also raised. You've been affirmed uh, on one hand with some of the work you've done in Parliament, but both Mr. Nyembezi and Ms. Mdai have said, where does COPE stand on the issues of the day? It seems like you're distracted by these mm. internal squabbles and we don't know where you stand on free education. We don't know where you stand mm. on a host of questions around the economy, unemployment. Have these questions uh, that, that, that are fundamental to our nation at the moment, uh, of yeah. fed up South Africans, have they passed you by because of your internal fights? Look, um, like they both have indicated, we're few there at Parliament, but like I used to say to her, better few, but better. Okay? <laughs> uh, we're doing our best. Um, there are very many committees there at Parliament, and we can't go to each and every committee. But then we have a manifesto. When it comes to education, we know where we've got to go. It comes to unemployment. We know uh, what COPE uh, uh, is saying we what, need to what, go. What are you saying and, on unemployment? No, look, unemployment uh, rate, for example, uh, we have fought. Some of us who come from, like they say, from the trade union movement, in my time, when I was still president of COSAD, with four million members in the trade union uh, movement, for example, know what we did and we have taken uh, that particular you know background into that which we say COPE has got to achieve we know now for example that uh, that trade union uh, movement has less than 1.7 uh, million uh, uh, people but then we are saying that uh, people in south africa have got to be uh, employed uh, we're talking about more than 70 percent when we talk about the youth now COPE has risen in parliament to say this and that and that have got to be done. And, uh, and in that each, is what? What is this and that and that? And in each and every uh, uh, milieu of the problems that face the people of South Africa, we have been able to come up with uh, that which we believe has got to be done. And uh, so, when we go so to let our... Me, let, let me bring in, let me bring in Ms. Mda and then Mr. <coughs> Mbezi to respond. Okay. Because you, okay. you've said... COPE is, it's present. Oh, we're doing our best. This and, uh, this and hence, that and hence, that. Hence we are respected. And, well, 
Or be it with you. So, so, so no, Ms. Mda, COPE is doing its level best. It actually is outspoken on these questions. And maybe its size prevents us from seeing or hearing that. Um, and then, Mr. Nyambezi, we, we heard a, a manifesto to solve unemployment. We'll see if, if that convinces you in terms of your criticism of the party. No, for me, I think, I think Sizwe, the questions that you are really asking are questions that are honestly about the character of COPE when COPE is in Parliament, understanding what, um, what is its mandate for it to serve in Parliament. That is the first point. The second point is the relevance and the validity of COPE's contribution into the body politic of South Africa as a political party. You will remember, being in parliament does not necessarily then mean that you have ceased to exist as a political party. You ought to still have political programs that are able to keep you visible, grassroots visible, but also being in touch with the issues of the day so that you are not seen to be in a discord or in a disjointed uh, misdirection of where the masses are going and where, which side are you going. And I think at this point in time, the issues that I keep on speaking about for me is not really an issue of um, you know, being seen to be um, having a point that is of criticism to cope, but it's rather um, issues that COPE ought to reflect on and be able to say, if we're entrusted by by 37, I mean by the 37 uh, members of parliament that we were able to send to parliament in 2009, what did we do right then at that point that resonated so much with the public and the electorate that they were willing to, buy, to bet on this COPE vehicle without having seen it before? So now, with the time that they have existed, there are problems that they ought not to be experiencing because they have already been given by the electorate a, a public vote and a public confidence that says we are willing to bet on you guys. As such, we will send you to these strategic centers of power so that you can be visible. But equally, that meant that COPE needed to oil its political vehicle as a political party to ensure that whilst it is seized with governance issues in government as serving in parliament, it it's equally able to, pro, to produce sharpened political ideas that can penetrate the state of, 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 of governance that it is operating on. And at this point in time, it is not doing anything that I believe as Anele. It's really reflecting resonance and, 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 and relevance to the, to, to the broader electorate of South Africa. Absolutely. We're having a debate, a discussion, not only about the influence of small parties over South African politics right now, which is massive. But we're also speaking about COPE in particular and seeing the extent to which COPE has been able to wield that power successfully or unsuccessfully. We'll be back after the break. Mr. Nyambezi will get your views on COPE's actual stance on unemployment. And then I've got a question that I've always wanted to ask COPE leaders. After the break, I'll ask it. Welcome back. We're discussing the influence of small parties on South Africa's political landscape. And as we begin to wrap up our program, I'd like to take some of your comment on social media. So let's have a look at what some of you have been saying on Twitter. Moiketzi Tladi says, I remain member of COPE and the only problem is comrade Terra to resign as he failed dismally to unite the party. We have Leo Smangaliso who says COPE does not offer South Africans any meaningful direction. Mr. Bloom speaks to South Africans as if they are grade R children. No focused mature person wants to be led by such leaders. Mr. Madisha has no more fire in him. He tries very hard to imitate the EFF. Lekota is tired. And then we have Mzuvukile Mbukushe who says COPE must, be, must close the shop because they spend the time fighting over leadership instead of building the party. That was our last tweet. Mr. Nyembezi, before we went to the break, we heard Mr. Matisha responding to you where you said COPE doesn't have a vision for unemployment. It's too mired in its own internal squabbles. What's your view on what Mr. Matisha said? In fact, COPE does have a view on unemployment and we just don't hear it because the party is doesn't have a loud enough microphone. A view they do have, but uh, it's not enough. It's about now using the mandate that we are given by the electorate to translate that view into 
something that is going to better the lives of South Africans. And um, uh, COPE has, has been found wanting when it comes to that. And I mean, uh, I think COPE is not alone in this. Political parties have now become a liability in our democracy. The, the straight jacketing that you find in them, it suffocates uh, the views. The, the issue about factionalism is not unique in COPE. And uh, the looking into the narrow party interests is what uh, is stifling our democracy. I mean, this um, that we're talking about, uh, infectionalism and, and terror here being the de facto and the jury person. I mean, I long for a time. Uh, I mean, the, the, the character of leaders that we know, because when Terra Lakotas contested the position of the national chairperson of ANC in Mofokeng, contesting against Steve Chwete, you know, there were no factionalisms of this nature. Steve Chwete's group had organized a party in one corner of the university there in Mafikeng. But when Lakota won, everybody went to celebrate in Steve Chwete's party. And uh, there were no factionalism. But Anela was asking, what is it that COPE did to get so many seats in it's the first election it contested? Yes, people were sympathizing uh, with these leaders with struggle credentials right. uh, who had broken away from, 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 from the ANC. So I think it needs to go back to basics to say that in realignment <coughs> of the politics, sure. hope must also ensure that it doesn't continue sure. becoming a liability to the electorate because of narrow political interests. Absolutely. Thank you for, the, for those insights from a slightly zoomed out perspective. We've had debates about whether you should have power, whether it's fair that you even do have power, whether you're too involved in your own internal problems, whether you're actually doing interesting and important things. I want to ask something historical, though, to end okay. off, that I've always wanted to know, and now that I have COPE leaders here, was it really true that senior members of the ANC contributed to forming COPE? Like yeah. former President Leckie, like Minister Trevor Manuel. Was, was it really true? Well, I, well, I can tell you uh, who uh, was there from the outset in the formation of COPE, because of it we launched uh, officially in 2009. Uh, and must, and uh, you know, in, well, yes, we have, we have we a went minute to the elections left, in, so yes. please don't leave us on tenterhooks. Okay, let me go on then. Uh, I was one of the senior leaders there. Mr. Lukota was you know, the third most senior leader in the ANC. Was former President Mbeki there? No, he wasn't. Uh, Mr. Uh, Shiloa uh, was there. He was in the national executive. Uh, Never you know, any by meetings virtue or any... Of, by virtue of the fact of him being the provincial chair, I suppose uh, you know. So, uh, yes, there were the leaders from ANC and the Tripartite okay. Alliance, uh, who were there. But then right. I want to tell you that... Unfortunately, the, we don't have much time, so this is yes, the last... Yes. Key. We're going to have the, to ask you to round up The problem that we had from the very outset was that the ANC came up with a committee of 13 people, uh, chaired by Jeb Khadebe, to destroy COPE from the beginning. Okay. And I, they have succeeded. Okay. Okay. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that's where we're going to have to leave it. Thank you very much. But we'll much. continue the conversation on social Thanks, media. I really wanted to know your thoughts too, yes, but we'll, we'll, we'll hear that. We'll, we'll chat more on social media. Let's take this conversation there. Thank you very much, Mr. Matisha, yeah. Ms. Mda, Mr. Nyembezi, for joining me on this first program. And we'll see you on Thursday night for another round of Unfiltered. <laughs>